We've been thrown out of better places than that, I assure you. Uh, like you know, we do a lot of people, a lot of things get kind of serious. It's such a pleasure to have you here. Thank we you very much. Thank you very much. I'm a silver fox and I still love to swing with the monkeys. All right. Oh, God. Thank you. Hi. Do you feel you appreciate your success more the second time around? I do. A lot. Uh, I don't know whether I appreciate it more, but I certainly know better how to handle it. That's, you know, I've had a little training. Uh, I think yeah. it's interesting success, you know, you, uh, first time around, you know, you, you look at it and all of a sudden you sort of like get all the cobwebs out, the inhibitions and things like that. And it, if you're smart enough, you don't become a prima donna. And what happens is, is that you, you get all your insecurities way out of the way and all the nice things come out. And I think that's what's happening to us now. Peter. Peter, we were saying behind your backs, so we might as well say it in front of you, you must have made some wild teacher. Now, when you said you handled success better the second time around, what happened the first time around? Something pretty awful, huh? Well, I was, I, I made a joke of it earlier, and there was a, a bout with chemistry with me and, uh, and addiction, and I, it's, uh, the only thing I have to say about that is that uh, it wasn't until I was able to uh, quit trying to handle it on my own that I had any, that I had the break I needed. I, it, surrender was my victory. And uh, if anybody has, uh, is, is concerned about it, you have to give up and ask for help. That's how it worked for me. What was the... What was the drug of choice? What were you doing? Mainly alcohol for me, as it turns out. The worst one. Yeah, which the is the biggest. One. That was the biggest deal, yeah. The withdrawal and the, the addiction. Well, it, it's funny, you know, I'm such a compulsive character now that I, I'm still working on a coffee habit. And, uh, <laughs> it, uh, and, but, you know, I was telling a friend of mine, if they made a pill that would enable me to drink uh, successfully, you know, moderately, I would probably overdose on the pill. <laughs> <laughs> I love you in a single. Are you going to do an album? We've done it. We have done the album. Yes, called, thanks for asking. It's called Pull It. Pull It. Uh, there's another plug, by the way. Yes. Any of you Sorry. Sure. This it, are you going plug. to hold that up? You going to hold that one up for yourself? Oh! Oh, oh, oh all right. Rota. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, all right. Right? Oh. Whoa. <laughs> That's it. First, first album in first album in twenty years. Well, eighteen. Eh? Well, eighteen. I would like to know if you're all married and all have children, and how old are they? Um, I have three children. I have a a daughter who'll be nineteen in October, and uh, a sixteen-year-old, and I have a a little girl that'll be six next week. So, uh, I've got three beautiful daughters. I, uh, I, uh, I am married. I have uh, four children. I have one who's uh, 18, will be uh, 19 uh, at the same time as you, I think. Yeah. Uh, I have uh, uh, three little girls, uh, five, three, and two, uh, and uh, they're with me now on tour. And so it's a, week, a real family tour, this. I, um, I am uh, currently uh, getting a divorce from my most recent ex, or my soon-to-be ex. And uh, I have two children, a 17-year-old daughter and an 11-year-old son. And I've been, I, I've been clean for how long? I've been clean for how long? Six and a half, uh, three quarters years. Yeah. Do you, just, just hold on a second, do you usually tell people about the alcohol problem? When it comes up, I, I have no, uh, there's no reason to hide it, uh, you know, it's, uh, I, I, I hope that by the fact that some, some of us do, uh, we go, we don't recover, we go into recovery, you know, uh, for, it, it's not something, it's not like a broken arm where you, once it's healed, you can stop thinking about it. I have to think about it every day, but it's sort of more like diabetes in that sense. Once, if I give it a little thought, I can take care of, of a full life otherwise, so. I'd like to know, with your newfound popularity, uh, Michael Nesmith, does he regret not coming along, or do you not want him to come along with you? No, it's the real story. Like it's he doesn't the remember real the story. The real story is very simple and is very boring. I'm afraid there's no muckraking here for any... No, there's nothing... At least I'm not going to rake any muck, wait, I'll tell wait. you that right now. If, no. if you can't muck any rake, I know. <laughs> then we can't do this kind <laughs> of real boring, show. I know, it's so we'll boring. make up something. Okay, Why I'll make up something. Uh, he, uh, uh, he, he asked him to has join a... us on the tour, and uh, he didn't... Uh, he couldn't. He I mean, couldn't because of other commitments. We all just uh, put the, our see. commitments aside um, for, the, for the Monkey's 20th anniversary, which was last year. 
We had such a good time that we came out again this year. We have plans, uh, Mike many join plans. He might join us at the Greek Theater last year for a show. He also came and did the MTV Christmas video with us. He runs a big company, an uh, uh, executive of a big company, and it's not like he can tell his secretary, put my calls on hold for three months, you know. He just can't do it. We tried to get together this tour, but it just wasn't possible. Okay. When we return, a whole segment devoted to the fact, are the monkeys just a nostalgia act, or will these guys have force in the year to come? <laughs>